Hallelujah. 
Ephesians 4.29. Thank you, Kwan. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. In the context of our church, Encounter Jesus Television is the mouth of Encounter Jesus Ministries International. We apply this verse to the context and encouraging messages that edify, inspire, and promote grace and the God life among viewers. It suggests that the words spoken through the television, whether in sermons, interviews, movies, music, news highlights, or discussions, they are uplifting and beneficial for the spiritual growth and encouragement of viewers. Also, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. In that spirit, we witnessed the fruit of our collective labor and the blessings of our fellowship as communicated in the just concluded Kuji Apostolic Invasion, which the EJTV disseminated to over 80 countries worldwide. That's a good place to come. All these call for a heart of gratitude to God for the wonderful works he has done and is doing in EGMI and by extension, EJTV. It's no coincidence that today marks our Thanksgiving Sunday service, a time to reflect on God's goodness and faithfulness. So, with hearts overflowing with thankfulness, let us express our appreciation to God for his wonderful works among us. With a resounding applause, please give me. Let's welcome the Egypt Even News Update. Welcome to a news highlights on Encounter Jesus Television. My name is Crystal and I will be your anchor for today. Last Sunday, Encounter Jesus Ministries in Abuja, Nigeria was electrified as God's anointed servant, Apostle Michael Oropo, ministered on a sermon titled, Power for All Round Victory. In this enlightening message, Apostle Michael Oropo delineated five types of power elucidating their sources and profound significance in our spiritual journey. His teaching ignited a fervent desire among the congregants to deepen their work with God and enhance their relevance in life. There are five kinds of power that anybody who will live victoriously must have. The first is spiritual power. Write it down. The second is mental power. The third is economic or financial power. The fourth is relational power. And the fifth is governmental power. There are three basic ways of accessing spiritual power. The first is revelation. The second is consciousness. And the third is consecration. Anybody that has these three things will walk in spiritual power. You must have a revelation of who your God is. You must have a revelation of what your God has done for you. And you must have a revelation of who your God has made you. These are the three categories of revelations you must have to walk in power. 
From Encounter Jesus Cameroon comes news of jubilation following the recently concluded Falbat Revival Crusade, led by the resident pastor King Okopi. Over 209 souls found salvation, accompanied by more than 100 remarkable miracles and healings. Conditions such as visual impairments, deafness, neck and abdominal pains were corrected, showcasing the undeniable power of God at work. But that's not all. The Sunday service last week at the Council Jesus Cameroon marked a significant spiritual shift. The atmosphere was charged with impartations and the tangible presence of God setting the stage for divine interventions and transformations to the glory of God. Encounter Jesus Zambia continues to witness the growth of God's work under the careful spiritual leadership of resident pastor Saint Patrick into the world. Last Sunday marked a significant shift in the spiritual atmosphere as a powerful word of God resonated mightily among the congregants, preparing their hearts to fulfill God's will. In another joyful update, Encounter Jesus made history by hosting its first ever mega crusade last Saturday. The event was a monumental success with souls saved and life transformed by the power of God. The last Sunday service at Encounter Jesus UK, under the leadership of resident apostle Eddie Mugisha, congregants were moved by a powerful sermon that stirred the hearts and minds. The message encouraged faith in God and a commitment to carry his burdens. Lives were transformed and hearts lifted by the impactful words shared by God's servants. At Encounter Jesus Ministries, prayer is foundational aligning with the biblical admonition for men to pray without season. We extend a heartfelt invitation for you to join us for Monday prayers at 5 p.m. at Opik Event Center. Experience the power of collective prayer and witness the miracles and testimonies that emanate from this sacred group of seeking God's solution. Join us and be a part of something extraordinary. Welcome back. You're still watching the news highlights on Encounter Jesus Television. And now to the just concluded Kuje Apostolic Invasion. The city of Abuja and the territory of Kuje are still recovering from the groundbreaking impact of the just concluded Kuje Apostolic Invasion. In Romans 6 23, the wages of sin is death. Savior of my life. Lover of my soul, I lift my hand to worship you, Father, Redeemer of my life. After I, when I went to the hospital in 2020, when the day I was operated, I had to do a scanning. They said nothing was wrong with me, but I couldn't walk. I you could, couldn't walk? Yes, after the surgery. I was, my spinal cord, got, my spine got affected and then I did an MRI test. They said I have any degenerative disease of lumbar spine. Early, wait, wait. Now you are, you are saying some things. Early degenerative disease, degenerative disease of lumbar spine and it's meant for whole people. Early degenerative disc disease of the lumbar spine and it is meant for old people and you are not old. You couldn't do anything. The hospital couldn't do anything, so they discharged me. I was referred to National Hospital, Bogota Specialist, Airport. So what couldn't you do before? I couldn't bend. I can't walk. You couldn't bend. You couldn't walk well. Come on, this is not the time to cry. This is time to dance. God revealed His mighty presence through an outpouring of miracles, healings, signs, wonders, and an abundance of testimonies. This lady is crying, you can see her crying. Yes. She fell from a height and had spinal cord injury. She, can't, she couldn't bend, she couldn't stand. This lady? Yes, but right now you can see her standing. What happened to you, lady? To bend. She is bending. When I was in secondary school for it, but I fell. How many years ago? <laughs> I was close to five. Five I years. Six. And then I fell, and from then on, I couldn't do a lot of things. I couldn't bend. And what happened to you tonight? I feel amazing. I don't feel pain when I'm standing. I stand up well. I can bend. I can bend. Man, let's see you. Thank you. 
no pain. Spend according to reborn. Do you know the price that Jesus paid? Do you even understand what Good Friday is about? Whether it is Friday or Thursday, that's not the issue. The issue is that one day he died. He became our substitute like that woman. Souls flooded into the kingdom, forever transformed by the power of God. and the power of the Holy Ghost Spirit upon the land and I know that it's going to be amazing because the youth are going to, it's going to be, it's going to be mighty. To bring sight to those that are blind, you know, to bring joy to those that are mourning in Zion, that is what we have come to do, to depopulate the kingdom of hell and make sure that the people of God are translated from the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of, of his son. I think it's a very good thing for our generation to know that this Bible, the word of God, the gospel actually has power. God is doing mighty things already. What do you have to say about the theme in the days of his power? It's, it's, it's such a very Kairos thing because um, I think that's exactly what God is doing in this day and in this time. And the preacher, Pastor Isaac Oyedebo, has revealed a very deep mystery on the power of the gospel. And we are witnessing right now the power of the gospel being put on public display. On Tuesday, March 26, 2024, Encounter to Jesus Ministries International, Abuja, was graced with the powerful teaching of God's servant, Apostle Michael Oropo, on the doctrine of scriptures. In this enlightening message, Apostle Michael Oropo provided invaluable guidance on understanding the Bible, exploring its foundation, and the divine process by which it came to humanity. So when we are dealing with the story of inspiration, we are dealing with the fact, not just the fact that God alone was the one who spoke, we are dealing with the fact that everything captured there is consistent with the will of God, in that God was the one who allowed them to capture it and to document it because he has a place in God's corporate agenda. So the things the devil said are not words spoken by God, but God was the one who inspired it to be captured in scripture. On the strength of that, the agenda of God has something to do with it. So it comes under the government of God's will. That is why it is part of scripture. On March 24th, the Encounter Jesus Women's Ministries in Abuja extended a helping hand to the Kwambe community in Suleja through a welfare outreach. Overflowing with love, they distributed food items, shared the gospel of Christ, bringing hope to those in need. We commend the dedication of this woman and pray for the Lord to grant them even more grace as they continue their impactful work in transforming lives and spreading God's love. Uh, we thank God for your coming in this program. We are really grateful for your coming and we are encouraged by your coming. We are blessed with the word of God and we are encouraged. Sometimes we feel weak in our spirit, but as you come and you share this love of God with us, we have strength again and we pray that God will keep us together and be a blessing for us in Jesus' name. And a part of your visit, we have physical something material thing that we have received in your hands we are really grateful for this special gift we pray that god will bless it in jesus name before we conclude today's news highlights i have some exciting news to share encounter jesus television is now open for advertisement placements allowing you to showcase your business to over 80 countries worldwide Additionally, you can connect to all our live services through your free-to-air decoder or the Comet TV app. Don't miss this opportunity to expand your reach and connect with the global audience. Connect with us today at tv at encounterjesusministry.org or call 0905-592-4287. 
to learn more about advertisement opportunities and how you can be a part of Encounter Jesus television family. And with that, we conclude today's news highlights on Encounter Jesus television. Until next time, I remain Christian Aradi. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. This is Encounter Jesus Television. Experience, intimacy, transformation, and dominion. Somebody shout glory! <laughs> Once again, shout glory! <laughs> Are you excited in the house? Once again, are you happy to be here? I'm, I'm, I'm so feeling energetic because of what God is doing and what God has done. He said, great, great are the company of those that publish the gospel. Are you publishing the gospel? You will never cease to be great in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we've seen what... How many of us witnessed the Kuje, you, the Kuje? I'm not talking about online, let's start from on-site. You were there. Me, I, I was there. I was there, live and direct. <laughs> A lot. How was it? How was it? Power, 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 power. A lot, a lot of souls. In fact, on the third day, we took testimonies. In fact, there was no time because testimonies we are taking, testimonies we are still coming in. People we are being healed, people we are being delivered. Do we have people from Kuje in this place? Kuje shout glory! That's right, that's right. A lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of them. So we thank God. And from that meeting, from that meeting, a lot of souls we are saved. A lot of souls we are saved. And uh, from that meeting alone, over 795 souls we are won. Is it how you celebrate what God has done? Is it how you celebrate deliverance? Is it how you celebrate? You see, the Bible says there is joy in heaven when one soul. Just imagine the number of joy we brought to heaven in just these concluded weeks. Imagine the joy we brought to heaven. Not just one. If there is numerous joy in heaven when one soul is one, how much more when over 700 souls we are one? Just in three days. Just in three days. Amen. Amen. And for the partners, those that supported for this uh, invasion, apostolic invasion in Kuje, the Lord bless you. Those that supported with your finance, the Lord bless you. Supported in your prayer, the Lord bless you. Those that um, we are part of the publicity, the Lord bless you. Whether you are online or on site, you are seeing us in this service, the Lord bless you. And if you took part in the three, you gave, you prayed, and you were there, the Lord bless you. Amen. I love to partake in the three. I love to partake in the three. And um, also, it's also good to let us know that um, total number of souls, one in this past week is 22,104 souls has been saved in this last week alone. Is this how you celebrate? The Bible says, they that win it souls, they are wise. And also, to let us know that um, from January till March, a total number of 193,000 956 souls has been saved from January. I don't think you are celebrating. I don't think you are celebrating. Let me tell you, let me tell you the implication of this. As souls are being saved, potential bandits are being removed from the street. Potential kidnappers are being removed from the street. Potential armed robbers are being removed from the street. Potential, you know, people that have that the devil has captured their soul, they are being delivered. And as they are being delivered, they are being saved, the society is being freed. Amen. Amen. Somebody once again shout glory. Amen. 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 We have uh, some testifiers. Um, on There's a lot of testimonies 
but because of um, a lot has been shared here but because of want of time we'll just take a few persons if you don't hear your name it's not because we don't value your testimony we value everything that God have done everything even if it's headache do you know there is headache that can you you will experience you won't come out for two days in fact you won't be able to stand up even when you attempt to stand up you want to keep your head at a particular level because it will be like your head want to fall off all these things are the glory and miraculous works of God amen so do we have our sister Alabi Regina please celebrate them as they come Uzoma Astona Uzoma Oladi Meji please come forward we celebrate you Diana Daniel, please, if you are here. Our brother Igemun Emmanuel, if you are here. Grace Ezekiel, if you are here, please come forward as we celebrate what the Lord has done. Isn't it wonderful? You know, the Bible said, uh, the, apostles, he, he, the, the apostles declared and he said, silver and gold I have not, but that which I have, he gave. The day you don't have money, make sure you have power and the power of god was mightily displayed on the crusade ground we have money and we have the power that is where we belong to our sister please come forward allah be regina kindly let us know what happened and what the lord has done good evening shed praise the lord my name is allah be regina um, Please permit me to read. I summarized it here. Good evening, church. My name is Alabi Regina. I'm here to return all the glory back to God for rescuing me from the spirit of death. Um, last year, I died four times. Uh, by God's grace, I woke up and um, I was afflicted. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, uh, you know, we need to uh, explain that part so that <laughs> for clarity. She meant that last year, when we heard her testimony, she was actually caught up some for three good hours she was caught up she left no nobody knew what she doesn't know what was happening and nobody could get her revived until after three hours there are some cases like that but because everything is being cut short we need to put it that way okay so thank you um i was afflicted with different kinds of diseases that doctors don't even know at some point even the last one they told me to go home and uh, see or see a behavioral doctor because they don't know what to call those illnesses and then um i also want to thank god because all the test results both the kidney function liver function all manner of they came out clean but yet i was dying in pain i was that woman that i was to Femi Lazarus talked about because everything <laughs> it's okay it's okay amen how many of us remember um last thanksgiving service when god's servant declared that there is a woman that this is certainly not unto death you remember me i remember do you remember so she came to testify and thank god that she was that woman that at that point she was still she was in the service at that very day and she she had given up and when that word came continue man. yes actually on the 30th god told me it was not on to death but the pains were too much that i could not bear and i can't go back to hospital i came at some point panic attacks were like in one hour i sometimes i do have it like four times five times in one hour so i came one day was becoming too much i came and met apostle he prayed for me i couldn't tell him i couldn't explain because all my body was shaking he just told me you are healed and uh, you are delivered and i i went home but then the whole thing continued that particular sunday when apostle mentioned that case i was like god you said it's not unto death then why all these pains and that sunday i was down a uh, saturday pre before that Sunday, a pastor prayed for me from the church. That is one of the reasons why I came to uh, encounter Jesus. Somebody directed me because of that affliction towards the ending of last year. So I, I, I enrolled in School of Spiritual Foundation. A pastor prayed for me that particular Sunday concerning that health. I said I'm going to testify. So when I came to church, I was telling God that if it's not unto death, please let this thing go. And then if it's unto death, if, it, if it's my time that you should please, because of my young children that you should extend it and i was 
really in pain and I was f fighting, battling with breathing and all manner of things. But when I came to church, immediately I he climbed the altar. I said, God, let my word came, come. And immediately he climbed the altar before he said, said let him give this message before. And that message was for me. And since then, I'm here. All the drugs that were given to me before, none of them were working. Instead, they were working against me. But I'm here since since the that day. Amen. 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 You know, the, because of the level of what she, she, she has gone through, she's getting emotional. But the testimony is this, that the Lord delivered her. The Lord delivered her. And she's been delivered from everything that every symptom that she was experiencing is over all the physical depression in fact she was all my body at some point were decaying you could see them and the manifestation sometimes we don't sleep in my house or my husband is aware he's also sitting down here we don't all my body was decaying my tongue my legs if i open my you will see that the healing in fact i've not been taking drugs since um i um since middle of january to date but i'm hell and hurt you, you, you no no you're not experiencing any of those things now Again, you will never experience them for life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. The Bible says, He that the Son set free is free indeed. Amen. Our sister, please come forward. Let us know your name and what the Lord has done. Amen. Church, praise the Lord. My name is Asamta Uzoma. <clears throat> praise God. I want to thank God for my life. I want to thank God for all he has done for me and my family. First, I want to thank God for delivering me. I was afflicted with depression for nine months since um, June last year. Excuse me. She said she was afflicted with depression for nine months, right? For nine months, she was depressed. What happened? My mom don't know, my sisters don't, nobody know. It was just me, I was just dying inside that it's we it got to a point i wanted to take my life during that process i just don't know but i i told the devil something i said if god restore me back you'll be in trouble because one amen we didn't hear that when she said she attempted taking her life there was something because of you know the the situation there are some things we cannot say here you know when she mean attempted taking her life it was real it was she really attempted taking her life and in that situation she uh, made a vow that if the lord delivered her and she told the devil devil you will be in trouble talk to us because i was once a strong christian and all of a sudden i fell i i fell very well even when i came here i even anything that i was doing the service i would just be looking at them just be looking at them because i don't know how to pretend like anything i don't have i don't have so, like, I just want to thank God because the second day of the crusade, when Evangelist Isaac, he made an altar call, he called for um, um, salvation, for addiction, and for restoration. I came out for restoration, and after that day, God restored me back. I am a lover of God. That I, 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 the way I do it is dancing. Even during that period of depression, even if I come to church, I don't dance, I just, but after that day, ah, I can't. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. The Lord delivered her in the Kujay, just concluded Kujay, uh, apostolic invasion. You don't know what it means when people go through depression for nine months and she couldn't take active participation. Her spiritual life came to zero. But at the account of your giving of your prayer and of your active participation salvation was brought to her doorstep and it became the reason why she was restored once again shout glory to god amen, amen. please come forward mama what did the lord do for you and what is your name ma'am okay, praise the lord my name is dina daniel uh, this is the first time and the first day i'm stepping to this ground and I heard about Apostle for the first time in the month of October. When a mother in the faith sent me his message, I was, wow, this is wonderful. 
So I, I've been looking for opportunity. I even asked the mother to be sending me more of his messages. So I happened to be in Kuje of recent, just last month I came to Abuja. And then I saw the billboard and the poster, I said, this is a great opportunity. So I was there throughout the crusade. But when I saw it, even when I started attending the crusade, my, my desire, my craving was not for miracle. But all I wanted was to hear the servant of God, to receive a word from him. So, but on the last day of the crusade, and before then, I was sad. Last year, I can't explain what happened actually, but I started having pain on this, my right hand, and my leg, like bones. It was a bone problem. So at the time, I even started considering going to, uh, considering going to see a doctor. So on the last day of the crusade, that was yesterday, I was like, God, I pray specifically, Lord, you can give me a miracle. Let my case be mentioned. Lo and behold, my situation was mentioned. The first person that came to testify yesterday at the crusade ground was a born problem. So when he now prayed for him, he now said that any other person that is having a born problem, I declare healing for every one of you. And instantly, you know, the pains on my right leg, hand, uh, right leg, uh, hand, you know, disappeared. And even the pain on the leg. And even before that, night before last, no, I mean Friday night, I could not even turn my, my hand, this right leg, right hand. But since that yesterday, I could do anything. Mama, how long did you have that pain? It started last year. I can't remember precisely, but last year. Yes. Yeah, so right now, I can do anything with my Do it again. Let's see. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, she told us, she told us there that while she was on her way to the service, that she said, let her check maybe what she experienced was correct or not before she go and testify. And up to the time she came up to bring forth her testimony she was still checking even while she was talking to us she was still checking and checking and you will never experience it again in jesus name amen thank you mama thank you our own brother Emmanuel. praise the lord church mine is a testimony of um, preservation i was reminded yesterday while at the crusade ground and that's why I'm here, because God also has to receive all the glory. It's a bit over, um, it's long overdue, but I'm here nonetheless. So um, <laughs> uh, let me begin by stating first that um, we are very blessed to be in a house like this, a sort of apostolic conclave. And I say that because my Christian journey is very new. And before now, prior to joining um, Encounter Jesus Ministries International, um, I, I didn't understand what it, what it means to be led by God or to hear God's voice. Um, I, I, I didn't know how, what it meant to appropriate healing and all of this stuff. But after I've joined it in one to two years now, I now know what it means to hear God's voice and to be led by God. I've been able to appropriate healing for myself. I've had growth vanish from my own body just by catalambanoing, you, you know, my own word, right? <laughs> And I've had the courage to step out and to speak to people about Christ. And so I'm just, that's just the first reason why I'm here to thank God. The second reason is for preservation. And please, I would like to encourage everyone who is not coming for Monday prayers, please do. There is a lot that's happening there and you can receive your word right there at the prayer ground. And the second thing is if you're not in the unit, please join. It's also good to have a close um, set of believers around you who could pray for you, you know, when you're not even aware um, of it. So, um... Early on in January, I was heading out for a rendezvous, and uh, I had reason to pull over by the side of the road just at Federal Housing, um, on, under the bridge, yes. Um, and I stopped, and just as I finished um, giving the directions over the phone, someone stepped over to the driver's side, and um, they asked me how to get to uh, what's it called, Jabi. Now, I, the moment they stepped, they stepped into my space, I just felt a strange sort of aura, and I knew something was off, just off the bat, right? But I gave demand the benefit of doubt and I told him this is how you get to Jabi but then he pretended as though he was making a phone call and as though he was speaking to me at the same time so I peeped uh, I, I parked behind the behind the car and I, I tried to look through the um, the rear mirror if someone was in it so just establish that it's his car or it's not his car and you know just run off if that was not the case and the car was heavily tinted so I couldn't see through and he asked me one more time. I found it quite strange and attempted to put the car into ignition so I could step out. And that was when I heard a violent struggle on the other side of the car door. Thank God the car is always on, um, 
Central. on central lock and the windows are always wound up so I turned and saw someone trying to break through into um, from that the passenger the right passenger door and just then two more guys jumped out of the gutter and this was 1 p.m. broad daylight right and there were just a few people around and it, this was happening the first thought that came came to my mind was it was either a robbery or a, a kidnap attempt and they all came around the other guy who attempted to open the door came around with a broken bottle and right away attempted to stab me in my neck and the other guy who was asking the questions was trying to prevent me from getting the kind of ignition to run off. But by the grace of God, I was able to um, overpower them and I pulled out the key, attempted to stab them back and they stepped away for just a bit. I was able to get the car started and wanted to drive off, but then the car stopped right in the middle of the, um, the first lane. Right, it was diagonally, it stopped diagonally this way in the first lane. And I saw them coming right back at me again. So I had to jump out of the car into the second lane right incoming traffic fumed him up and down i thought they were going to hit me or hit my car but then um these guys came right back at me again and as i was fending them off that was when the accident began to happen and um people started to stop and then step out of their cars and as they saw that they ran back and that was my my saving grace i saw ebenezer that day um come heavily in my life and that was how i, I accept that situation unscathed and it just brought back to my mind some other situations that happened, the two assassination attempts on my dad's life. And still yet in January, my younger brother became a victim of an environmental fracas just around the, um, the, the house. And he was injured, his tendons were cut, and he had to go in for surgery. My dad healed really well. All the bullet holes from his face, his neck, his ears, everything healed in about three to four, um, three to four weeks, as though nothing happened. And likewise, my younger brother, after surgery, he healed so quickly. And I was the only one who, in all of this sort of um, situation, escapes unscathed. So I just wanted to give God the glory and thank, thank him so much for his hand upon my life. Thank you. Glory to God. We thank God for that deliverance and preservation. Mama, you're welcome. Um, just say a few things. I'm going to explain whatever you hear. May the Lord give us understanding. Praise the Lord. So you know that I was a young Kuri Gabunda Faro de Nia Watam Biar Nanti Nata Ran Tuesday a Watam Biar twenty eight. Amen. Amen. So just to carry everybody along because we've um, uh, listened and heard her testimony. Her testimony is that she was pregnant uh, and um, she went to the hospital. And, um, and th there was some complication. And uh, the, the, the doctor uh, booked her for immediate surgery. And um, because of the surgery is not free, she have to pay some money. And um, uh, she started running around how to. And she, she called uh, our, uh, one of our brother, Gambo. If you know him, you know. And uh, the brother told him, no, you won't go for that surgery. Come, I will take you to uh, God's servant, Apostle Michael. He will pray for you, and you will never have need for that surgery. And true to it, the, uh, he, he brought the woman here, and God's servant make a declaration over her, and say, go and give birth, uh, and have your baby. And she left. And um, uh, time, time, time is the only thing. This is that wonderful baby. And there was no surgery. There was nothing, and she had her baby, and you can see the baby is grown, and uh, he's already saying some things that we need to understand. May the Lord bless his word. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Is it how you celebrate what the Lord has done? Is it how you celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Lift those hands and just begin to thank God. Say, Father, we worship you. We give you our own. We give you the Christ is risen. 
it's time for us to worship God with our tithe and offering. And tonight is going to be very different because the offering of today is not just um, the offering of I'm, I'm coming to church, let me just um, give my offering. But it's an offering where we express our love to God. He so said, those, those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, the only thing that God seeks from us is our worship. That's the only thing that he, he wants from us. That is the only thing that will make him come down to the Garden of Eden to seek for a man. Adam, where are thou? The same God that angels will pride themselves and say, I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence of God. That same God, even when man fell and disobeyed, because one of the, 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 the consequences of that disobedience was that man will die. And that death is where you would say man will be eternally or uh, be displaced from God. But because of his love and compassion, he had to deglorify himself, took the form of a man, died for us, endured pain, humiliation, and mockery just to save us. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, he said, For our sake, he made Christ who knew no sin to be seen, so that we would love, we would be acceptable to him and be placed in the right relationship with him by his gracious love and kindness. Kindly package your offering, your tithes, your sacrifices, seal of faith. Media, please um, display the account details for online audience. You can make use of the envelopes on your seats to do that. May we rise up as we pray. Express your love, express your honor, express your worship, Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the abundance of your blessings. We lift our offerings, our sacrifices as a sign of worship and obedience. Accept our offering in Jesus' most mighty name we pray.
reason for the season. If you don't have any testimony enough, this is enough to give God thanks. Hallelujah. This is Thanksgiving. You are talking to your neighbor. Give him a high five. And say, welcome to Easter. Come on, put your hands together.
religions. Come on, brothers. What is the assurance of eternity? Except the one who went there and came back victorious. Somebody give the Lord Jesus a shout. substance of our faith. Paul was speaking. He said, if Christ had not risen, he said, our preaching and our faith would have been vain. He said, if only in this life we have hope, we have all men most miserable. Thank God he rose again. Thank God. The grave could not hold him captive. I'm not ready to hear any story of hope that when you die this will happen that will happen and my brother I would have enjoyed my life well but thank God he went and he came back so anything he says we can believe honor Jesus lift up your right hand and say thank you Lord Jesus blessed be your name forever in Jesus precious name you may be seated glory to God what a weekend. We had a weekend packed with mighty spiritual activities, with enormous resorts. Glory to Jesus. When Kuji for the apostolic invasion, and while we are doing that, um, Pastor Kings was having his own invasion in Cameroon. And while he was doing that, Pastor Patrick was having his own invasion in Zambia. And so three crusades were going on at the same time. Souls, won, miracles taking place. What a blessing. Do you have the pictures? Can we see the pictures from Zambia? Or from Cameroon? Do you have the pictures? That's from Zambia. Pastor Patrick, my God. There's something about this white suit. Oh. My brother, get power, then get suit. <laughs> Don't begin with suit. Get power, then get suit. That's Pastor Patrick. In the nation of Zambia. Glory to Jesus. They had several miracles. So many souls won. You can see high conditions being dealt with. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Continuous. Yeah. So many persons received the word of life. And it was a huge blessing. Can we look at Cameroon? Where Pastor Kings. Was demonstrating the power of God. Hundreds of souls. Thousands of souls won to the kingdom. Do we have Cameroon? Celebrate. Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate. Jesus, celebrate. Jesus, celebrate.
Glitch. Can we have visuals from Kuji? So this is from Kuji, right? Glory to God. Mighty move of the Spirit. Glory to Jesus. Souls one. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Three meetings happening at the same time. Amazing God. So we give God thanks. You know, one of our burdens is to see souls won in a very short period of time. And we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your financial partnerships. And we also thank you for making yourself av yourselves available to be part of this move. So many persons were literally walking around the clock for four or five days to say that the meeting was a huge success. So the Lord bless you richly. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Before we get into the world tonight, we have babies to dedicate. Can we have them quickly? So we can get into the word of God. So we are adding them through crusades and we are also adding them through childbirth. Biology is also a gate. Don't make mistakes about it. Too. Be careful when you marry. Marry for kingdom's sake. One of the, the channels that the people of the other religion are using to populate the world and to advance their kingdom is through marriage. So, be fruitful. Nobody can be barren. Be fruitful. Anybody trusting God for a child, carry your child now. In the name of Jesus. We need prophets, apostles, kings, rulers, entrepreneurs, academicians to rise from different families and advance the kingdom aggressively. So that's also a gate. Come up, come up, come up. We don't have time tonight. I want to share some things tonight and then release power. The Resurrection Sunday is a day of power. It's a day of power. Glory to Jesus. How many, how many are we dedicating? One, two, three, four. Wow. Things are happening. Things are happening. Give the Lord a big hand. It's a good place to celebrate. So we'll, we'll have to be very fast. Hurry up, hurry up. Let's be so that we can manage time. Glory to God. So either the father or the mother, depending on what you agree on, take the microphone, give us one minute testimony, and then tell us the name of the child, and then we consecrate them together. By the way, myself consecrated mine a few days ago. So the thing is happening everywhere. <laughs> Can we have a microphone? This one is already an apostle. So they, there's a giant, a kingdom giant here already. It's a little giant. But time will reveal the full statue. Yes, let's begin from here. One minute testimony, what God has done for you, and then give us the name of the child. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for his faithfulness and his kindness towards me, you know, and my family. The Lord has been awesome. The journey was a wonderful one with the ups and downs, but through it, God came through for us. Glory to God. I bless the name of the Lord, and her name is Sarah which means the mother of all, mother of kings, priests, and, <laughs> and prophets. And she is Chizitaram, which means sent from God, Chinekwe. Those ones are ancient names. What is Chinekwe? Well, the Igbos, you, you met God early. In my place, any name you don't know, just ancient. 
<laughs> yes, go ahead. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Although I will speak for my wife because we both carried the pregnancy together. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Ideally, she should give the testimony you call the name. <laughs> Ideally. So let's let's do that. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to thank God so much for seeing me through all of the process. You know, the ups and downs, the stress and all that. God was faithful. Even when they were trying to book me for CS and I, God took over. I really appreciate God for that. Glory to God. And his name is Elijah. Olua Tubiloba. Daniel. Adedayo. Did you remember what Pastor Isaac told us? He said, we are saying, where is the God of Elijah? And God is saying, where are the Elijahs of God? This is one of them. <laughs> Go on, go on, help us quickly. I want to thank God for seeing me through the journey because... Give us volume. Oh, it was... Let me say it was an easy one because whenever I go for Antinata, I don't spend more than three minutes with the doctor and then I'm out. So when people spend like 30 minutes, I'm like, ah, what are they talking about? It's grace, oh, my sister. <laughs> just thank God for mercy. <laughs> thank God for mercy. God they are talking mercy. about things. <laughs> Glory to God. What was the name of the child? Praise the Lord. The name of this child is Minel, which means God kind. Um, if it means good thing has come to my hand. Then Oshokai means God has done me well. Then Tioluwani means it's God's own. Thank you. The heritage is much. Now stretch your hands in this direction and begin to speak over these children. Bless them. Prophesy, make declarations over them. Go ahead and speak, speak over them. These ones will serve the Lord. These ones will carry the mandate of the kingdom. These ones will fulfill purpose. They will fulfill ordination. Go ahead and speak forth, speak forth as a church. Declare their destinies, prophesy their destinies. Go ahead and declare. Go ahead and declare, declare. Thank you, Father. Manta, Caporia, Faragata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that these ones are indeed mighty arrows in the hands of warriors. None of their steps will slide. All the days of their lives, they will walk under the ambience of the presence of God. We decree that they are light bearers in the dark world. We decree that everything that pertains to their destinies is hereby granted by grace. We decree and we prophesy that in the days of their manifestations, their stories will be great, both in heaven and on earth. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, we proclaim that they are blessed. We proclaim that they are empowered. We proclaim that they are preserved. The corruption and the corrupting influence of this age will not affect them. There will be a light in the dark world. There will be a sort of the earth. And they will shine forth all the days of their lives. So let it be written. So let it be established. In Jesus precious name. And so by the authority of God. By the authority of scriptures. And by the authority of the office of the priesthood. Today I proclaim you. Sarah. Chizitaram. Chinekwe to the glory of God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. So let it be established. Today, by the authority of the word of God and the authority of the name of Jesus and the authority of the priesthood, I proclaim you Daniel, Elijah, Olua, Tobi, Loba, Adedayo. So let it be written. So let it be established. In Jesus' precious name. Today, by the authority of scriptures, the authority of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the authority of the priesthood, I proclaim you, Minel, Oshokai, Edogame, Tioluani, to the glory of God the Father. And so let it be written, and so let it be established. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Lord keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. 
lift up his countenance over you and give you peace in Jesus precious name amen somebody give the Lord a big hand congratulations you are blessed hallelujah can you walk on the sound this sound is sounding funny glory to God tonight I want to share with us on the blessedness of the resurrection Paul was speaking to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15. He said, from the days of thy youth, he said, thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The things that are enshrined in scriptures are not just meant to educate us. They are meant to bring us into salvation or into our inheritance in God. This is why it's important for every believer to have a thorough understanding of the word of God. The spirit realm is a legal realm. And so many things function on the strength of spiritual legalities. And the way the legal realm works is you must know what is available. You must fight for what is available. And then when you receive your verdict, that verdict becomes your deliverance. This is why people go to court to debate, to battle. But the whole battle in court is a battle around jurisprudence and jurisdiction. What is written in the constitution. That is where your deliverance actually lies. And the same applies in spiritual realities. No matter how you wish to have a good life, no matter how you hope to have a good life, you will not have it, no matter how you desire it, except as you know what is written and you advance on the strength of what is written. So the reason we teach the word of God is not so that you know some verses to quote, it's to give you understanding of what is available so that by them you can make progress in life. The presence of the devil notwithstanding. So tonight, I want to share with you the blessedness of the resurrection. So we don't just celebrate and shout and praise Jesus for coming back from the grave. There is a significance. There is an implication. The resurrection has an implication. And that implication is your blessing. If you don't know the implication of the resurrection, you won't know what to make demand for. And you won't know where to stand in order to enforce what is made available to you in Christ. So beyond the excitement, there has to be at the foundation a thorough understanding. I've quoted for you here severally from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Is the according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. But he said, all these things given to us is through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So it's the degree to which you know that you will reign. It's the degree to which you know that you will enjoy. It's the degree to which you know that you will exercise authority. That's why John 8.32 said, and you shall know the truth. And he said, the truth shall make you free. So God makes you free through the truth. If you don't know the truth, you can never walk in liberty. Glory to God. And so very quickly tonight, we are going to look at the whole con concept of the gospel and narrow in to the resurrection. You know, I began sharing at the crusade last night on the facts of the gospel and secondly, on the message of the gospel. There are three things you really need to understand. You need to know the facts of the gospel. You need to know the message of the gospel then you need to know the blessedness of the gospel. For this service, we want to look at the blessedness of the resurrection, which is one of the components of the gospel. But in order to give us a thorough understanding, let me just run through the facts of the gospel and the message of the gospel so I can now deal with the blessedness of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 4. 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 4. In fact, let's begin from verse 1. This is Paul trying to present a treatise of what he believes and what he has taught the churches. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. This is the gospel I preached. This is what you received. And it's on this premise that you are able to stand victorious in life. Verse 2, it said, by which also you are saved. It's by this gospel that you are saved. Your salvation hinges on this gospel. It said, if you keep them in memory, if you keep in memory what I have preached to you, if you keep it in memory, glory to God, you would not have believed in vain. So a man who doesn't receive this gospel, understand this gospel, receive this gospel, and believe this gospel, will suffer even the things that are already handled. So when you find people who are sick and helpless about it, it's because they have received the gospel in vain. If you find people who are poor, it means they have received the gospel in vain. If you find people who are living in sin, it means they have received the gospel in vain. And Paul is diagnosing here the reason why that is possible. He said it's possible because you either have not understood it or you have not put it in memory. That means you have not made it your consciousness. This is why I tell you it's important to understand revelation and to have consciousness of revelation. Paul is telling us the reason why many Christians who are supposed to be saved, walking in victory, are frustrated in life. He said they have received the gospel in vain. They have believed in vain. That means they don't understand what they believe and they don't put to memory what they believe. The moment you understand and put to memory, your belief will produce results. And these results are existential results. What that means is that it can impact on your everyday living. The gospel can impact on your righteous life. The gospel can impact on your finances. The gospel can impact on your health. This is the goal of the gospel. To, to improve the quality of your life until you begin to live and become a witness of God on earth. But he said it's possible to receive the gospel in vain. This is why he went over to reiterate the fact of the gospel that he taught. And if you go to verse 3, he showed us three major emphasis of the gospel. He said, for I deliver unto you first of all that, that which I also received. He himself received it. That means these things are not edited. They are facts. They are constant and they are eternal. I deliver unto you first that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. This is what is enshrined in the scriptures. Number two, which is in verse four. He said, and that he was buried and that he rose again from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. So Paul is giving us three cardinal emphasis of the gospel. Number one, he died for our sins. Number two, he was buried. And number three, he rose again from the dead. These are the three major facts of the gospel. And I told you that Although this is the fact of the gospel, this is not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is inferred from the fact. Are you following this? If you don't understand the fact, you cannot get the message. And if you don't get the message, you cannot get the blessings. So you have to go back first of all to understand the fact. And the fact is threefold. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, what is the significance of the death? the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. That is where the message and the blessings come out for. And I told you that there are five messages of the gospel, although I dealt with four at the crusade. The first message of the gospel, I said, is the message of the love of God. The reason Jesus died is because God loves man and he wouldn't let man be destroyed in his own sins. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. God does not want man to die because of his sins. So the love of God 
is what moved God to send Jesus to die. So the fact is the death of Jesus, but the message is that love propelled God to take that action. So every time you hear that Jesus died for you, what is the message behind that action? The message behind that action is that God loves you. This is why John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So it was the love of God that propelled God to send Jesus. Because if Jesus were not sent, you and I would have gone to hell. Because it's a law in the spirit. The wages of sin is death. Anybody who has sin must die. God can't do anything about it except as the price is paid. And so his love moved him to do the only thing he would have done about it, which is to pay the price. And the only way to pay the price was for God to become man because there was no other creation who had the stature to pay the price. So God had to become man in order to pay the price for our sins. Romans 5 verse 8 says, God commends his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Paul speaking on this matter in Romans 8.32, he said, if he did not withhold his only begotten son, but gave him freely for us, how shall he not with him give us all things? So the first message of the gospel is the message of the love of God. And I told you that even on the cross, Jesus epitomized it. The people that nailed him, the people that pierced him on the side, he wasn't angry with them. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If I was there, thank God I'm not Jesus, and I cannot be Jesus. But if I was the one, I would pull out that nail and stab him. What, what do you mean? You don't know. You are God, you know what you are doing. You are stabbing me. <laughs> Glory to God. But the love of God, even the ones that were nailing him, he still forgave them. Remember, they didn't ask for forgiveness. They didn't even know they needed forgiveness. But in his love, he already prayed for them. And I told you, you won't know the magnitude of that sacrifice. It's not just about death. It's about who died. It's about who died. Hope you know if a fly dies, the influence, impact is not equivalent to when a cow dies. The death of a fly is not as grievous as the death of a cow. And the death of a thousand cows is not as grievous as the death of a man. Now, what do you compare with the death of God? So we are not just talking death. We are asking who died. God condescended himself by taking the nature of a man and dying the death of a criminal. That's what we are talking about. And in case you don't know who we are talking about, is the one that the whole angels worship. Is the one that has never known sorrow. Is the one that has never known pain. Is the one that has never known disgrace. And apart from that, he is the creator of all creation. The Bible said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. John chapter 1 verse 1. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. So it is the people he created with his hand that were maltreating him. And as if that was not enough, they gave him the highest level of humiliation, the death of a criminal. So that is the level of sacrifice. But the Bible said it is a revelation of the love of God. Because of love, he was able to endure it. So the death is the fact, but the message is a love that cannot be quantified. Now on the strength of that revelation, you can now approach God with confidence. Because now you know that when you want nothing, God gave himself for you. Now you know that when what you desire was death and condemnation, God took your place. You can now come boldly because you are assured that God loves you. This is why sinners can approach God. Because now they have seen that God has paid the price on account of his love. And on the strength of that love, they can come to God. Because they know God loves them. The moment you know somebody loves you, boldness becomes natural. And this is where faith is born from. This is why Galatians 5, 6 says, faith walketh by love. Because the moment you see that love in that action, faith comes alive on your, in your spirit. If you cannot see love in what God has done, then you can never have a relationship with God and you will never have faith. So faith is not a mechanical thing. It's an offspring of love. The moment love is awoken, faith is born. 
and the whole idea behind the message is first of all to communicate the love of God to you that you deserve nothing you want nothing the only thing you qualify for is death and condemnation why you were to be killed God showed up and said I will take his place if you can see yourself as a sinner and if you can understand the consequence of sin then you will appreciate the death of Jesus Christ imagine if you were an armed robber and then you were tied waiting for the firing squad to shoot you and just at the second where they are about to shoot they said wait and then somebody shows up and say untie him I will take his place and while you are watching they shot that person to death what will you say what manner of love is this what manner of love so when Jesus was there everything happening to Jesus was supposed to happen to you you were supposed to carry the cross you were supposed to be be crowned with with thorns you were supposed to be beaten to death hung naked on the cross you were supposed to be killed for your sins because the wages of sin is death but Jesus came and said no you don't have to carry the cross you don't have to, to carry the crown of thorns. You don't have to be beaten in shame. You don't have to be naked. You don't have to die. I will do all of that for you. You just go and enjoy what I have done. And live for me if you are reasonable. That's the message. But you see, unfortunately, we are not reasonable. The moment the person was shot at the firing squad, the armed robber left and carried gun again. Say, what is the next operation? That's the way many Christians are. Which one is the next operation? And they arrest him tomorrow again. You again? That's what many Christians are doing. Because they've not known the love of God. And because they don't know the love of God, they are not constrained. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.14, he said, the love of Christ constraineth us. He said, for we thus judge that if one died for all, they that live should not live for themselves. This is why we teach people consecration. You were worthy of death, but he took your place. Now the most reasonable thing to do is to live for him. But many... Have not known the love of God. The first message of the cross is the message of love. We are here today not because we deserve it, but because Jesus took our place. The second message of the cross is the message of the power of God. And I told you yesterday when Jesus was walking on the earth, he was dealing with demons, dealing with sicknesses, and Satan was angry. That is not your fault. It's because God put an anointing on your life. <laughs> Acts 10 38, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So Satan said, It's because God has put a power on your life. That's why you are doing what you are doing. But we will get you one day. So they planned to see that Jesus will be killed. Meanwhile, what they don't know is that you can't kill him. Even his death was a commandment. He said, this commandment have I received of my father. I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up again. But Satan was not aware. He thought if we kill him, casting out devils will stop. And so they manipulated and set him up for him to be killed. And Jesus cooperated with them as though they could kill him. Meanwhile, he could not be killed. He can only lay down his life because he's doing the will of the father. And when he was on the cross... They thought they had done it all. They thought they had won. It was on the cross that the battle took place. The Bible said in Colossians 2.14 that having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross because the devil didn't understand the nature of the fight. A brother was healed yesterday. He said he was involved in a fight and the, a shoulder was pulled out for 25 years. Before you fight, find out the nature of the battle. Before you go with a knife to a battle where they are using bazooka. The devil didn't understand. He thought the fight was a punching fight. He didn't know that the way the first man lost was by rebellion. So the way the last man will win is by surrender. So he thought the fight was fighting. So when he came, Jesus surrendered. He thought it was weakness. He didn't know that was where the victory was. And the moment he surrendered, the power of heaven was activated. And immediately he lost out. So the cross... And the gospel became a message of power. But you see, like I told you on the crusade ground, Jesus did not just defeat the devil on the cross. He also defeated every prince, every demon, because they went and locked him in hell and carried the key and said, now we will keep you here. And Jesus waited. They invited all the demons from everywhere. International demon, global demon, all the demons from the second heaven, they all showed up. 
and say, now we will keep him here forever and ever. When all of them gathered, suddenly Jesus rose up. And when he rose up, he disarmed all of them and collected the key of Hades. He collected it. And when he came out from the grave, he told them, I now have the key of hell. So Jesus came out and locked them there. And that was not all the power he demonstrated. After he collected the key of hell, death now showed up and said, but now I have authority over you. He said, no, you don't have authority over me. I came into you. I'm going out. I'm the one who have authority over you. Because Romans chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 said, Jesus was manifested in the flesh as the seed of David, but proven to be the son of God by power, through the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. So even death could not hold him captive. He disarmed death and still collected the key of death. And when he showed up from the grave, he came with two keys, the key of hell and the key of death. So the gospel therefore is a, a message of the absolute power of God demonstrated over Satan and demonstrated over death. So anybody who understands the gospel is inaugurated into power because it's a message of power. Why do you think we go to cast out devils? Because we know that the environment we are living from now is a realm beyond the grave. We know that the environment we are living from now is a realm beyond the reach of Satan. So when we talk, he has no choice but to obey. But you see, you will not have that faith until you understand the gospel. You were not born again before the cross. You were born again after the resurrection. And so you came into this league of champions when the whole work was done. Even our warfare with the devil now is not a fight to win. It's a fight insisting on our victory. We know we have won and we will not let you deceive us as though we have not won. That's the nature of fight we are fighting now. I know I'm a victor. I know I'm superior to you. I am more than a conqueror because the conqueror was the one who fought you. I came to receive the crown and there's nothing you can do about it. So we insist and take hold of our victory. The gospel is a message of power. This is why Romans 1 16 Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. So the idea behind death, burial, and resurrection is to show you power. That Jesus has power over the grave. That Jesus has power over Satan. So when you hear that he rose from the dead, it's a testimony of power beyond the grave. That's the second message of the gospel. The third message of the gospel is the message of the mercy of God. Because every one of us who qualified to die, all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. Instead of death, he says he has made you a priest and a king. How can a convict become a king? What have you done? Nothing. So on what basis? It's on the basis of the mercy of God. They wanted to kill you. There's something that just happened a few weeks ago in Senegal. The current president-elect was in prison until 10th of March. And he came out of prison either 10th or 14th of March. 10 days later, he became president. <laughs> That's the, that, that, it looks like that kind of narrative. You were a prisoner a few days ago. And then they showed up and said, you are the next king. And then you are wondering, what, what's going on here? What did I do? They said, you did nothing. Somebody else did everything. You were qualified to be killed. You were qualified to be condemned because you actually sinned. You actually sinned. You are actually guilty of sin. And justly speaking, you should be destroyed. But God came and said, no. Why? James 2.13, mercy prevails over judgment. I won't let him die. I will pay the price for him. And instead of dying, I will exhort him to become a king that reigns. And then you ask yourself, what do you call that? It's mercy. Because you don't qualify for it. So the gospel is also a testimony of mercy. And this is why when we preach the gospel, we tell people, come as you are. You don't need to do anything because none of us did anything. Everything we did and ever will do will end up condemning us further. So it's better to just believe. Come as you are. It is by mercy that you are saved. 
Ephesians chapter 2, if you read from verse 3, the Bible makes it clear about God who is rich in mercy. Ephesians, go to verse 4, please. He said, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Verse 5. He said, Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved. So the message of grace is actually a revelation of the mercy of God. That while you were dead in sin, worthy of condemnation, instead of condemning you, God pulled you out, washed you, and enthroned you. Not because you deserve it, but because his mercy wouldn't let you be destroyed. That is the message the gospel reveals to us. And this is why all of us in Christ must be humble. Because nobody came with any qualification. We were all worthy of death. We were all condemned criminals. It was the mercy of God that washed us and decorated us. So if you see any glory on our life, that glory is a testimony of mercy. Because at best, I was a condemned criminal. It was mercy that decorated me. Because mercy prevails over judgment. And this is also the reason why you cannot trust God for anything. Because there is nothing God gives you that you earn. Everything God gives you is a product of his mercy. And if he has decided to give you everything on the product of his mercy, then it's better to take the best. If I was earning, I would have taken the one I qualify for. If I don't qualify for, then I can as well take the best because it was his best he gave for me. When he gave Jesus, he gave the best and he gave him on the premise of mercy. This is the third message of the gospel. The fourth message of the gospel is the message of the wisdom of God. He showed us how Satan miscalculated. God spoke from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3 verse 15. He said, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. So it was not a hidden thing. It was a public knowledge. And because God said that, any man that becomes strong, the devil goes to him. The devil has been carrying out questionnaires from Genesis. Are you the son of God? He went to Abraham. He went to Cain. He went to Samson. Anybody that looks like a champion, he goes there. Because he was afraid. The God had already told him that the seed of the woman will crush your head. So he felt the first thing to do is to identify the seed of the woman and have two things. Number one, negotiate with him to surrender or to crush him. That's what he has done from Genesis. He went to Cain, deceived Cain, killed Abel. He thought he had won. And he continued like that to Abraham. He made Abraham to lie. He went to Samson. Anybody that was mighty, Satan went to him. So he was looking for the son of God to destroy until Jesus showed up and God didn't hide it. In the baptism of Jesus Christ, Matthew 3.16, God now said openly, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The moment God said this, Satan showed up. I was looking for him. Thank you for revealing him to me. And he followed him to the wilderness. He gave him the first bargain, surrender to me. And Jesus refused. In fact, Jesus ended up rebuking him. Okay, since you will not surrender, we will kill you. Because if we kill you, we will end the battle. You will not crush our head. And the devil came and foolishly killed him. He laid down his life in cooperation. Because the devil, like I told you, does not know the nature of the battle. He didn't know that the fight is not in fighting, it's in surrendering. And the Bible said, if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because if Jesus does not die, there's no way the head of the serpent would have been crushed. So if the devil was wise, the devil would have allowed him. You can't die, so live forever. And Jesus would have been looking for how to die. No demon. They would have told every demon, even if he falls from a mountain, hold him, let him not die. If he's involved in an accident, hold him, let him not die. Because the only way he won't crush our head is to stay alive. But he didn't know that God turned a puzzle around. And the thing that he shouldn't do is what he was doing. And he mobilized Pilate. He mobilized Herod. He mobilized Roman soldiers. Peter carried knife and wanted to fight. Jesus said, stop. Something is happening here beyond your brain. He cut off the head of the, the ear of somebody. And what? said, no, put the knife aside. If it's about this type of fight, 
I can make one call now. Twelve legions of angels will call. But this is wisdom at work. And you know the way wisdom works? The more you fight it, the more it will win you. That's how wisdom works. And the devil kept mobilizing, mobilizing, until Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. And the devil thought it was finished. He didn't know that it is finished means the bondage of man is finished. I have completed the job. It is finished means the devil has been crushed. That was when the eyes of Satan opened. What have we done to ourselves? We helped him to win us. He said, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. So we helped him to be lifted up. Yes, it's the wisdom of God in manifestation. The Bible calls it the manifold wisdom of God. You can't use your mind to understand it. The more you fight it, the more he prevails. That's the gospel. And this is why till tomorrow, the things Jesus tells us to do, they look simple. When we do it, the devil is overcome. He doesn't understand why. Suddenly, the Holy Ghost came and gave us a strange tongue. And then you just see somebody doing and you are like, what's he doing? What's he saying? He said, how be it in the spirit? He uttered mysteries. How be it in the spirit? He said, no man knoweth what he's saying. How be it in the spirit? And you know the way this wisdom works? Even you saying it don't know. He said, when I speak in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayer, my understanding is unfruitful. So both you and others don't understand. He said, but how be it in the spirit? He uttered and the devil is wondering what's going on as you are doing that man tapara katoria vakapata he said you are being built up building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost so what the devil will call foolishness is god's way of building you after a while you become a giant and he's wondering this boy gave his heart to christ three months ago he was a baby when did he become a faith giant manta peria varagata saxaria baradona man Everything is a mystery that they cannot understand. And the devil is wondering, at least when they give birth to a child, it should be 20 years before he's mature. In the spirit, it's different. In six months, you can become mature. Because as you are eating the word, it's maturing you. As you are praying in tongues, you are building up. And he's wondering, how can a six-month-old baby become a giant? Wisdom. So everything about the gospel, it's a testimony of wisdom. And that's why Paul said, we speak wisdom amongst them that are perfect. He said this wisdom, the princes of this world do not know it. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 8. And he said this wisdom were hid for your glory. He said if the princes of this world had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. This is why we, 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 we strive by the gospel. You know what Paul said? 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 1, 23. He said, we preach Christ and him crucified. He said to the Greek, it's foolishness. To the Jews, it's a stumbling us. Stumbling block. He said, but to us who are being saved, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So what we do that looks foolish to them, suddenly translate to a glory they can't understand. It's the gospel. The fourth message of the gospel is the wisdom of God. It may not make sense, but therein is the manifold wisdom of God. And the fifth message of the gospel, sit down for a moment. The fifth message of the gospel is the message of the righteousness of God. Romans 3, from verse 23 to 26. See the way the Bible puts it. Romans 3, 23 to 26. For all have sinned, and falling short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God. Next verse. He said, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Next verse. Whom God had set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sin that are past through the forbearance of Christ. Next verse. To declare I say. That at this time his righteousness. That he might be just. And the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. What's he talking about here? Everybody sinned and fell short of the glory of God. He said but God in his righteousness. Did not condemn people. Rather 
he presented Jesus as the penalty for sin. And he said it's not just those who are present now. He said even those who sinned in the past. God presented Jesus as a penalty for their sins. So that those who believe, there will be a just basis for which they are forgiven. They are not just, their sins were not just deleted. A price was paid for them. And he said by so doing, God is justified in forgiving them. You know, those of you who are in Africa here, you understand what happens. If a poor man's child steals, he's stoned to death or he's in prison. But when the child of a politician or a ruler or a king does the same offense that the poor man's child does, you will see that the case will die. And they will fly that child abroad for five years. He will come back and everybody will forget about it. That's what the Bible is saying God did not do. When we sinned as the children of God, God did not just say, they are my children so they can't die and deleted the case. No. He said God is righteous. God himself paid the price so that when he forgives us, it will not be an act of tyranny or subjugation of justice. It will be justice manifested because God did not exonerate his own child from being killed. He paid the price so that when we are forgiven, our forgiveness will be justified. That's what he's talking about. Go to a New Living Translation. Let's read this in a clearer version. He's speaking about the fairness of God. So if God is a king, his child sins, he will punish that child the way the commoner will be punished. And so when we sinned, God made sure we paid the price of death. But what God did in his fairness was that he died for us. So in dying for us, he is justified in that he didn't exonerate us from the penalty. The penalty was paid. And so he's forgiving us, he's justified. That is the righteousness of God. That's the message of the gospel. Except for he was looking at, no, go to verse 23, start from there. For everyone have sinned, we all fell short of God's glorious standard. Verse 24. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. Verse 25. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in time past. Because even they too, the sacrifice covers for them. Verse 26, he said, For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in the present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. For he himself is fair and just and he makes sinners. For he himself is fair and just and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the prize. Jesus is the sacrifice. God did not behave like our politicians who would just say, take my son out of that prison and do a charade in public and even though the prize is not paid, they are declared free. In the case of God, a just prize was paid because God has to prove to himself first that he is just before he can prove to you that he is just. So God did not kill the case. God actually balanced the case by paying the price. And so the gospel reveals that God is righteous. This is why when you come to God, you can believe in his righteous character. And it's on the strength of his righteous character that he is trustworthy. So salvation therefore is an equation that includes the love of God, the mercy of God, the wisdom of God, the power of God, and the righteousness of God. And all of these things are articulated in the gospel. This is why Paul speaking in Romans 1 verse 16 and 17. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. And in verse 17 he said, Dearing in the gospel, he said, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That means the message of the gospel reveals the righteousness of God. This is the, these are the five basic messages of the gospel. And these messages are 
are the substance that bets faith. If you know God loves you, it will be natural for you to trust God. If you know God is able to save you, which is his power, it will be natural for you to trust God. If you know God has mercy and is merciful towards you, it will be natural for you to trust God and to rely on him. If you know that God is all wise and what he's doing will lead to your good, it will be natural for you to trust God. If you know that God is righteous and his ways are not crooked, it will be natural for you to trust God. So faith comes when the message of the gospel is apprehended. And so Romans chapter 10 verse 16 says, Who has believed our report? As Isaiah said. And that's what Isaiah said in Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5. Who has believed our report? Unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? From verse 1. And then verse 5 he said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes were healed. So what Paul was saying in Romans 10, 16 and 17 is that is the message of the gospel that brings faith. See, it's not every preaching that brings faith. Oh. It's not every teaching of the word of God that brings faith. You can hear some preachers and you'll become afraid of the devil overnight. Because they will exalt the devil so much. If you are not careful, even the little faith you have, you will lose it. You will hear some preachers, they will exalt their circumstances so much. If you are not careful, even the name of Jesus will not mean anything to you. Paul is telling us the word of God that brings faith is the message of the gospel. Who has believed our report? As Isaiah says, it's a faith cometh by hearing and hearing by that message, that report that Isaiah gave, which is the report of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that gospel is a message of love. It's a message of power. It's a message of mercy. It's a message of wisdom. And it's a message of righteousness. As you understand it and you start reading the Bible, the Holy Ghost will now start opening different dimensions to you. And you'll discover that you start growing from one level of glory to another. Now, when you understand this message, then you can enjoy the blessings of the gospel. Because this message produces beyond faith other blessings. Of course, you know now that faith is one of the blessings. Because the moment you receive this message, faith comes alive in your spirit. For example, if I choose to zero in on the mercy of God, even a, a, a kidnapper can suddenly become bold and come to God. A murderer can become bold because now he has heard mercy. And because he has heard mercy, he knows he's not condemned. He can show up. If I preach the message of the love of God, somebody who is sick in the hospital can suddenly wake up and say, come on, if God loves me this much, he won't let me die of cancer and faith will come alive. If I preach the message of the wisdom of God, somebody who is going through poverty and financial crisis will say, come on, if God is this wise, then he can deliver me from this. You will discover that wherever people are, suddenly they will find faith and respond to God and God will deliver them. But you see, all of that is routed first of all through faith. So faith becomes the first blessing of the gospel. When a man hears the gospel, no matter the situation he finds himself in, there will be enough faith quickened in him that will deliver him from that crisis. And you know, faith is the answer of human affliction. Faith is the answer for human contradiction. Faith is the answer for human pains and sorrows. And why faith is so important is that faith produces results even where there's no raw material. The Bible says through faith we understand that the word was framed by the word of God and the things which are were not made out of the things we do appear. So when faith comes alive in your spirit, even if there was no raw material, faith will become the raw material. This is why faith delivers from any situation at all that a man finds himself. And faith is the first blessing of the gospel. The second blessing of the gospel is life. The moment you catch the message of the gospel, the life of God begins to rise on your inside. And that life is also a key to your victory. Remember, the Bible says, whoever is born of God, whoever comes into the realm of the life of God has overcome the world. So life automatically gives you victory unprecedented. But you see, life comes from the gospel. If you don't hear the gospel, you will never walk in the realm of life. John 11:25, Jesus was speaking. 
He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. So when we are teaching the resurrection, we are actually teaching about a type of life that is superior to death. That's why I told you, this thing is not just about celebration. You need to understand what it is. When we are included in the economy of the resurrection, it also means that we have been included into a life force that is superior to death. I am the resurrection and the life. He said, he that believeth in me shall not die. And he said, even if he were dead, he shall live again. Why are we celebrating the resurrection? We are celebrating the resurrection because the resurrection brings us into a new realm and into a new economy. A man who receives the gospel cannot not just die, nothing in his hands dies. See, as I'm standing here now, I have an assurance that none of my organs can fail. It's not just because I am healthy. It's not just because I exercise. It's not just because I rest. It's not just because I eat well. All of those things are good and do it as much as you can. But I know there is a kind of life in me that will not allow my system shut down. That's the meaning of the resurrection. When I accepted Christ, I became a partaker of that life that death cannot defy. If you read Romans chapter 6 from verse 5, see the way Paul puts it. See, understand spiritual truth so that they will make meaning to you. He said, for if we are planted together in the likeness of his death, he said, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. So the same way Christ rose from the dead, the life that he possesses that brought him back from the grave, the moment we accepted the gospel, that life was calculated into us. And so that life that rose Jesus from the dead is the same life at work on your inside now. When the Bible said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Why will he not perish? It's not because God said so. He will not perish because the moment he believed in Jesus, life was injected into him. He said he will not perish, but he will have everlasting life. There is a type of life that death cannot destroy. There is a type of life that cannot be defeated. That is the life we receive. And this is why 1 John 5, 11 to 13 said, this is the record. You may not know it, but they know it in the spirit. It said, God has given us eternal life. Where did we receive that life? We receive that life when we believe in the resurrection of Jesus. You know why? When you believe that Jesus resurrected, you are saying that Jesus has immortality. And because you believe that, God includes you in that economy. He said, this is the record. God has given us eternal life. And he said, this life is in his son. He said, whoever has the son has life. He's telling you, this is the record. In verse 13, he went further to say, I have written this thing to you that believe in the name of the son of God. I know you don't know, but I'm writing to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Because you may not feel it, but that you don't feel it does not mean it's not there. So you don't walk in it because you feel it. You walk in it because you know it. And everyone who accepted Jesus, life has been put into them. And this life is not animal life. Everybody on earth has animal life. You don't need Jesus to have animal life. So long as you have blood, you have animal life. This is not soulish life. Everybody on earth has soulish life. That's why they, they, some of the the wisest men on earth, some of the technocrats, some of the businessmen don't believe in Jesus. They are just using their soulish life. It's called suke. There is bios, which is in the blood. There is suke, which is in the soul. But there is another type of life that you can have until you believe in the resurrection. That's the zoe of God. And the difference between zoe and suke and bios is that zoe defies death. Anybody that has Zoe has gone beyond death. Zoe is immortality. Second Timothy 1.10, the Bible said he has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So a man who understands this life is not just living above death. He's living above corruption because mortality means corruption. So in the gospel, we come to a realm beyond corruption. This is why your body can be sick because sickness is a type of corruption. This is why your soul cannot continue in iniquity because iniquity is a type of corruption. This life makes you to live like a God man. 
while you are walking on the face of the earth. How did you think Philip bilocated? It's not a special grace. It's a type of life. That life operates in that order. When you know eternal life to a level, a point can come that eternal life can defy the movements of time. How did you think Jesus walked on water? It was the life he carried. Why do you think Jesus said lay hands on the sick they will recover? It's not by closing your eye religiously. No, it's not about whether your eyes are closed or open. It's about what is flowing through you. If you know that there's life in you, when it flows, it can cure something. It is a life that God has given us. I don't need to be in a miracle service to walk in healing. I don't need to, to be in a prophetic service to have spiritual experiences. That life is a realm. It's a realm. It's the realm of God. And it's the force that powers God. That's what God gave us in the resurrection. See, many have not understood eternal life. I was teaching them in Oweri and I told them, don't think God will give you another life for eternity. This is the only life you will live with forever and ever. Because this is the God life. There's no better life than this one. At the rapture, do you know what happens? At the rapture, your body is changed. And your soul is renewed. But nothing happens to your spirit. The life you have now is the same life you will live in eternity. You know what that means? That means your soul and your body is what is stopping you to operate like a being of eternity. If you renew yourself more now, you can fly. <laughs> because there's nothing everything you can do in eternity you can do now that's why Philip bilocated that's why the shadow of Peter healed the sick there's nothing you can do in eternity that you cannot do now do you know what Paul said in Philippians 3.10 he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering this was the cry of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 2 he said for this cause we travail we travail that we might be clothed with our heavenly tabernacle Why we are yet here because Paul knows that anything I can do in eternity I can do now if only I can stop my soul from limiting me if only I can stop my body so when God gave us eternal life he made us a wonder to our generation all your limitations hear me I product of ignorance that's why I said my people perish for the lack of knowledge. See, there's something you know about life, you can recreate your organ. There's something you know about life, you can recreate even your age and refine yourself. See, we are limited because we heard the gospel late. This is what, don't allow your children waste their time with cartoon. Teach them eternal life early. Tell your son, there's a life in you. If you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Tell your son, you can talk to the dead. Tell your son, when you speak, weather can change. Teach him from when he's two years, three years, four years. When your son is five years, he will do what general overseers now cannot do. Because out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength. Ignorance is what limits us. We are cascaded in our ignorance. But when the gospel comes, it brings liberty. It brings liberty. The blessing you have is called the life of God. You carry the life that God carries, and you are like this. Does it not suggest to you something is wrong? That means the volume, the magnitude of ignorance is heavy. It's heavy. At least Jesus showed us that you can live on earth the way you will live in eternity. See the way Jesus used this life. He showed up. They said, Ah, 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Even a year's wages can't suffice. He said, What do you have? Bring it. They say five loaves and two fish. He carried it. Thank you, Father. Take, give them. He didn't even pray for the bread. Take, give them. And how did bread begin to multiply? He went to a wedding. The wine is finished. He says, it's not yet my time. Why are you troubling me? According to my calendar of manifestation, it's not yet time. But notwithstanding, there's capacity. And they said, fill the jars with water. They filled it. No prayer. Take from inside. Aye. the power of life flows through consciousness so that's why you have to be careful what you think because you communicate power or death depending on your consciousness take, give them and they took to the governor of the feast the man screamed others give the best wine at the beginning you kept the best wine till the end of the feast how come? it's a life they carried the boat and were going if you are the one you'll be agitated the boat is gone and finished not Jesus the life of God cannot be defeated. 
what I carry can produce another both. And even if I don't produce both, even the water will respect it. Because there's something here. And the Bible said at the third word, Jesus came walking on water. Because this life has rule over water. And when they saw him, they screamed, he's a ghost. I don't have to be a ghost to walk wonders. I carry the life of God. It is I. And Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. Prove to me that this thing is not exclusively yours. And Jesus said, come. And Peter too began to walk on water. That's a proof that you too. Hey, somebody shout, man. Why do you think the devil is putting out scary information, corrupting information? He's darkening your mind. Because the life works when the light comes. He said the life was the light of men. So a man will only walk that life to the degree that he has light. So the devil knows. And his attack is on your light. He darkens your understanding so that you can manifest that life. But when you manifest that life, you discover that you come into the realm of immortality. Christians are supposed to be a wonder to their world. But you know what? We have only been exploiting the blood life by us and the soulish life. So a Christian is proud that he has three master's degree. I'm not against it. I'm also an academician. And I took time to study. So when I said things like this, you will not say it's a religious by God. I have a doctorate degree. So you can't say I'm talking down on, educa on, on education. But hear me. If all we have are papers that universities give us because of secular knowledge, it means we are behind. How many witches pride themselves in certificate from Harvard? How many witches pride themselves in certificate from Stanford? When you meet a witch, it tells you, let's connect by 12. That's how we know who is who. And the meeting is on the Indian Ocean. And they are floating on the ocean. And nobody drives there. They all appear there. Do you know the technology of appearing and disappearing? Do you know the technology of traveling by the whirlwind? The pride of a witch is the power to dominate nature. They can enter a tree and appear in another country. How many witches need visa to travel? We are bragging that we are flying on first class. We have visa to, to, to Canada. We have visa to the U.S. And a Christian goes to the U.S., goes to Canada, and is bragging. It's a testimony of death and defeat. A witch can visit U.S. every day for three months. All he needs to do is to climb his broom. And he will fly to U.S. and come back in one night. You depend on Boeing to go there. What is our problem? We are not educated in light. And the foundation is a wrong consciousness. Everyone listening to me now who is born again, you carry the life of God. So Jesus expects you to manifest God. That's why he said, you shall be witnesses unto me. That means you will prove everything I say to be true. How can you do it if you are not in this class? You shall be witnesses. He was speaking in John 14, 12. He said, the works that I do, you shall do also. And greater works than this shall you do. But we are developing the soul, developing the body, and we are bringing that secular development to build Zion. No, Zion is built only by the Spirit. He said, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He said, he has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. See, when you touch things, they should be healed. So it's a blessing for you to touch people. Because when you touch them, you transfer something. See, when you talk to your business, your business should work. Because when you talk, you are not producing sound. You are producing life. Did you not see Jesus? Jesus talked to trees. Jesus talked to the dead. Jesus talked to bread. Jesus talked to water. What did he know? The realm where he operates from. Everything hears him. And all we know about building our business is human connection. And we can, because of our business, violate the ordinances of the kingdom in order to use politics to build connections. The celebration of the resurrection of Jesus is a reminder to us of what God has given to us that we have not begun to use. Imagine if all of us were walking in life there won't be need for miracle service. How can you sit? You'll come into a meeting. 
you sit among 200 people who have eternal life, the concentration of that life has not touched you. It means everybody there is dead. Can you sit inside hydrochloric acid and not be burned? Is it possible to sit inside sulfuric acid and not be burned? How come a sick person comes and squeeze himself? See how choked we are here. And somebody is still sick. And nothing flow from somebody else. Not Jesus Christ. The Bible said the woman with the issue of blood. She had spent all she had from giving to doctor. She touched him. Jesus didn't know she was there. It's about the overflow. He said virtue left him. And Jesus turned and said who touched me? Because virtue has left me. I carry an overflow of this life. I don't need to pray for you to be healed. Touch me. Something will touch you. In Mark chapter 6 verse 19. He said they brought all that were sick. That they may touch him. And he said as they touched him. Virtue left him and healed them all. And Peter said this thing is not a prerogative of Jesus Christ. When he walked on water. Me too I walked on water. Because what he carries is what I carry. And the Bible said in Acts 5.15. They put the sick on the sick on the street. In Peter's case they didn't need to touch him. The shadow carried them off. And that same Christianity is handed over to us. And this is the best we can produce. Can we pray for one minute? Can we cry for our heritage? you my business is not working I don't know what to do you why not start by talking to the business that's something to do that's where to start from you business in the name of Jesus begin to work and let's see if that business does not have intelligence a Christian comes to you my brother is sick I don't know what to do why not begin by laying your hands he says you shall lay hands on the sick they will recover do you know who you are religious people. See, there's a difference between Christianity and other religions. I've told you many times, Christianity is divinity expressed through humanity. We are here to manifest God to a dying world. And the basis for doing that is the life that we possess. We carry the life of God. And God expects us to walk from Israel. This is what Easter is about. It's not just to come and celebrate and sing and dance. No. I'm resurrected with Christ. I'm risen with him. I operate in his life. I operate in his order. I manifest his dimension. In the name of Jesus. Sit down for a moment. You know, Christianity needs to be redefined. We have, we have built religion out of Christianity and patterned ourselves like other religions. That's why our number counts for nothing. The church of the apostles, one man could enter a city and take it over. One man. We are conscious only of earthly things. And so we, our experiences are identical with the experiences of the godless people. The same thing they experience. 
It's what we experience. And it ought not to be so. Some of us who grew up and had the opportunity of visiting villages and come, we saw some things. When you go to the house of a sorcerer, the children are learning how to cast spells, how to give herbs, how to do dark, dark, dark science. And we don't know what we should practice. One of the things you should preoccupy yourself with is how to manifest the life. There are times when you are learning how to transmit healing through your palm. Those are the things that we should do. There should be times when you are learning how to change things with your words. And so for a whole month, you are watching the weather. And you, you build your faith and consciousness. And you are talking to weather. Trying to alter the weather. That's Christianity. So that in the day where it is necessary, you can show up and bring deliverance to Jacob. You should learn to wake up and speak to people and change the course of their lives. They tell you somebody is cursed. You say, who is the person? You come and you talk to the person. In three weeks, this and this and this will happen. And you are watching in prayer for that thing to happen. When it happens to one, two, three people, you now begin to gather people. You start addressing groups of people. That's Christianity. How can you be the, the salt of the earth? How can you be the light of the world when you are the same with them? We don't know who we are. You should know, learn, see, you should talk to things and they obey you. And then you become famous in it. So businessmen will call you and say, please, this Saturday, we don't know if you can talk to 25 of us. You say, wait, I'm coming. You show up. And you talk to the business. All of you who are into real estate, I decree and declare, the land opens to you. Begin to possess. And you are watching. After one month, all of them become landowners. Even they we know that this land, we got it by power. Christianity is not come to church, sing, dance, pray and be excited. No, we are the sort of the earth. When we master this, then the world can give us attention. That's when we will teach them the principles of the kingdom and we refine their minds. That's why Jesus said, signs before teaching. These signs shall follow them that believe. If you don't demonstrate signs, nobody will hear you. Check the apostles out. They enter territories, demonstrate wonder, and they sit them down and train them. And we want the world to hear us when we have nothing to show. Something is wrong. See, master eternal life. Train yourself. Because eternal life speaks. If that life becomes active in you, it may tell you in a whole month, meditate, study, study. Because the life needs energizing. And as you study, study, you will hit a crescendo. The life will want to come out of you. You are driving in a bus. Somebody has an accident. That life will tell you, touch his knee. Hold his knee quickly. Hold his knee quickly. And you will rush and hold it. Now it's the life that is regulating you. And you will see wonders happen naturally. There are times when that life will tell you, pray, pray every day, pray. If the time comes to pray, you will lose your peace. Because the life is feeding and when you feed that life, after a while, things will begin to happen that will marvel you. People will have accidents. You just see yourself walking on the road. You won't know what happened. The life has become a whirlwind. But we don't know what to give attention to. So Easter is not another religious celebration. This is the date that Jesus rose from the dead. No! It's an awakening of our heritage in God. And one of it is life. The third blessing of Easter is not just the life, it's the victory that the life brings. And I've shown you already, victory over death, victory over circumstances. When that life comes, it gives you victory. Things don't die in our hands. It's not pride. This is who we are. Even if it's failing, if we become a part of it, it starts working testimonies to prove it. Things don't die. When we talk, things happen. Because the life gives us victory over death. John 11, 25, I'm the resurrection and the life. They that believe in me shall not die. And even if they were dead, they will live again. 
John chapter 6 verse 40, he said, even on the last day, he will raise us up from the dead. That's why the grave can't trap us. There's a life we carry now. It's on the strength of this that he says, absence from the body is presence with the Lord. A Christian is not afraid of death. Death has been conquered. The Bible said, we should not mourn like those who are hopeless. No. For us, we don't die, we sleep in the Lord. And when time is accomplished, we will rise again with him. Why is that possible? Because of the resurrection. He said Jesus died and rose from the dead as a first fruit to them that believe on him. So God did it to show us that the same will be our testimony. And Paul was speaking, he said, at the end of time, at the last trump, he said, they that died in Christ will rise again. And he said, we who are alive, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Blessedness of the resurrection. It produces faith. It produces life. It produces victory over death, over circumstances, over Satan. Listen, God is not healing Christians only. God is not delivering Christians from demonic oppression. That package exists because of mercy. What God is doing with Christians is living in divine health. If God has to heal us, he does that because we are too infant in understanding and his mercy won't let us remain there until we grow up. So healing is an intervention. But God's plan is divine health. In 3 John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Not healing, in health. Is that 3 John verse 2? I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. So what God is doing is keeping us in health because the life we have will not allow us for sick if we are conscious of it. God is not delivering us. Our ignorance is what keeps us in demonic bondage. And because of his mercy, he has to allow us to be delivered. But that's not his package. His package is to live in a realm where you dominate demons. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 12, see what Paul said. We have already been delivered from the dominion of darkness. We are not supposed to be delivered. We have been delivered. He said, giving thanks to the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13. He said, who had delivered us? He's not delivering us. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he didn't just deliver us from the power of darkness. He made us to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians 2.6, Ephesians 1.21. Far above principalities and powers. When God has to deliver us, he pains him that we are still at that level. Because the package available to us in the resurrection is victory over devils. We should be casting out demons, not demons being cast out of us. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Demons fear us. They tremble when we show up. But when a Christian is in ignorance, the devil can still manipulate and dominate him. This is why you must hear the gospel. When you have not heard the gospel, a deliverance minister can come and pray for your healing, pray for your deliverance. But when you know the gospel, you don't need one anymore. And so when you find churches filled with people waiting for deliverance, it's a testimony that gospel has not been preached. And meanwhile, we have made fame out of deliverance. We have made fame out of praying for the sick. In church. I'm not saying these things won't happen. It happens because they are still babes and ignorant Christians. But that's not God's plan. God's plan is, if somebody told a story. He invited an evangelist to E.W. Kenyon's church. And I'm praying that one day we'll come for meetings here. Nobody will be sick. Nobody will need deliverance. That's the proof that the church is maturing. They came to E.W. Kenyon's church. And the guy preached. He sensed the anointing. He made declaration. He said, if you are sick, come. Nobody stood up. What do you mean? It has never happened. 
Sickness is obey me. They say that's true, but there's no sickness in here. Here, people are not sick. He taught them the word. Everybody could handle the word. E. W. Kenyon's story. They say you don't die until you are above 70. If you die, he will wake you up. Come back here. Where are you going to? We have authority over the grave. E. W. Kenyon could talk to bones, literally. That was the first man that started talking to bones. And bones responded graphically. And there was no teaching about any special anointing. It was about the word. The word. Those days they said, if you come to his parlor, the Bible is open. Go to his bedroom, the Bible is open. Go to his bathroom, the Bible is open. And that's what he taught everybody who was a member of that church. Every second they are reading a verse. And they are talking it to themselves. So they were cooked. They were walking in the reality of the gospel. Listen, we celebrate healing in church because we thank God for his mercy. But that's the wrong thing to celebrate. What we should celebrate is divine health. That in this church, in the last 10 years, nobody has been sick. In the last 10 years, nobody died. Why? Because when sickness comes, they know what to do. If that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he quickens your mortal body. So when somebody sees a growth, he's not waiting for a miracle service. Peres, Kapira, Bakatonia, growth, go down. And the growth will go down. If somebody feels a symptom of sickness, all he needs to do is to enter his room. And he meditates on scripture. Talk scripture to himself. Pray. When he's charged, he commands the sickness to go. And it's a normal routine. But today it's elders that fall sick more than everybody. And when you talk, they say, my brother, we are human beings. So let's not deny our humanity. So should our humanity dominate our divinity? Was Jesus not human? The Bible said, if anyone sick among you, let them take him to the elders. Today the elders are sick. Listen, I'm not saying there are no people who are attacked by demons. Sickness can be a warfare. And every one of us is fought from time to time. But what I'm saying is, there should be zero level tolerance for demonic oppression. And everyone should be fortified to be able to raise a war of defense against Satan. In resurrection, we have victory over death. We have victory over sickness. We have victory over demonic circumstances. Because we know who we are. Anything that can subdue Jesus has no right to subdue you. But the question is, do you know you are risen with him? Do you know? The blessedness of the resurrection. Today, if a doctor tells a Christian, ah, he will die of hypertension. They have not even told you the diagnosis. The doctor just shows up and is nodding his head. Say, Kai, this time, this thing, Kai. And the, the heart will jump out of the chest because the doctor's verdict is the voice of God. See, we need to make up our minds to believe the gospel and to practice it. Smith Wigglesworth and his wife entered the covenant and they told themselves from today no doctor's report here. From today no medication. The word of God becomes our medication. And they were not waiting for sickness before they meditated. They started chewing the word every day. Chewing the word. So sickness didn't come. A rugged generation need to rise but it takes revelation for that generation to be born. It's not just to put flyers on the internet and start shouting his reason. His reason. What is the proof in your life? Are you walking in faith? Are you walking in the newness of life? Are you walking in the victory that Easter produces? If not, you don't know what it is. You have just joined the trend. And trust me, Christianity is not about trends. It's about modeling God. It's about demonstrating divinity to a generation that is in lack of the revelations of God. He said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's own special people, called forth to showcase the excellency of God. I'm stirring up your faith because everything we tolerate will give authority to dominate us. You must come to that point where you say no to Satan, no to sickness, no to every negative thing orchestrated by demons. And then you take the word of God and stand on the word. See how your life will change. These things are not, are not cunningly devised fables. 
Peter said, we have not believed cunningly devised fables when we spoke to you about the coming king. He said, we were eyewitnesses of these things. He said, we were with him when he received the excellent majesty. He said, but we have a more sure word of prophecy. It is written. They banked their lives on it. He said, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Only men of God spake as they were moved by the spirit of God. Isaiah said, search ye out of the book of the law and read. He said, none of these things shall fail. The mouth of God has spoken it. His spirit has gathered it. These are things gathered by the spirit of God. He said to the law and to the prophets, him that speaketh not according to this word has no light in him. We carry so much light. That's why we say what the word say and we experience what the word experience. What the word says to experience. The fourth blessing of the gospel is that you are made an heir of salvation. You are an heir of God. You are not just delivered. You are not just called to live in victory. You have become an heir of the kingdom. That means the jealousy of the kingdom is your defense. That means the wealth of the kingdom is your possession. That's what an heir is. We are heirs of God. Ephesians 2 verse 6 Romans 8 17 and he has raised us together and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus everything is together 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 we go in here with Christ we share with him now so everything that is Christ is ours that's why Romans 8 17 it says if you are children then you are heirs and heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If you follow in the travail of the gospel so that you are glorified with him. So right now we are heirs, but we'll be glorified in eternity if we walk with him in his travail. But now we are heirs of God. Now we are heirs of God, not tomorrow. Everything that belongs to Christ is yours. And Jesus said, we are his brethren. Because we have come to co heir the possessions of God. You don't know what the gospel made available to you. A Christian becomes so proud when he gets a car. Or when he has few months notes in his account. His confidence is in mundane things. No. That's not what gives a prince audacity. A prince has audacity because of his status in the kingdom. I'm an heir of God. Things are a byproduct. My confidence is not in anything because I produce all things from my spirit. Things don't make me. I make things. I am an heir. That's who we are. But many don't know. Revelation 1 6 is said unto him that washed us and made us priests and kings unto God. He washed us, he made us kings and priests. The wealth of the kingdom is my inheritance. The wealth. This is the consciousness that produces consecration. And this consecration produces the results. But many don't know. We make religion out of things that are supposed to be realities. And not just realities, but realities that impart on existential things. You are not an orphan. You are not a hopeless man. You are not a useless stranger, wanderer, hoping to succeed. No. You are a prince of a kingdom. You are an heir of a kingdom. And the greatest kingdom there ever is for that matter. Become aware. So that you can access your blessings in Zion. Yeah. 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 show you the things we inherited as we pray number one we inherited the anointing of Jesus so when we say hey we are not just talking bogus things unfounded realities no we inherited the anointing of Jesus Acts 10 38 God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power Acts 1 8 he anointed us with the Holy Ghost and power so the same anointing Jesus carried we inherited it the second thing we inherited is the life of God. 1 John 5, 12. 
Whoever has the Son has life. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. Number three, we inherited his righteousness. Second Corinthians 5.21, he made him that was without sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. And I told you, righteousness is not just sinlessness. It's not guiltlessness. Righteousness is actually the power to reign. Because what makes God righteous is that he's ever right. Anything he says becomes. If God says this is light, it becomes light. If God says this is prosperity, it becomes prosperity. He can't err because there's a power that makes anything he says to be so. That is what we inherited. That's why Romans 5.17 said, We receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. We reign in life. You will need abundance of grace to have the gift of righteousness. Because in righteousness, anything you say becomes. That's why we can't fail. That's why we can't be defeated. There is a power in us now that whatever we do work and whatever we say become. And that was what Jesus operated in. That's why Jesus could turn water to wine. There was a power that makes anything he says become. That same power, we inherited it. It's called righteousness. Anything we say, anything we do works. And that's not all we inherited. We inherited his name. Mark 16, 17. In my name, cast out devils. He said, whatsoever you do, do in the name of God. We didn't have the right to use his name before because we have to become sons of God in order to have the right to use his name. And what a name. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confesses that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I have something that makes every knee bow. I have something that makes every tongue confess. This is why I can't be defeated. Brothers and sisters, Satan bows when I speak because I have something. Circumstances bow when I speak because I have something. Situations change when I speak because I have something. These things are more important than money. If God give you money, you will finish spending it. But when he gives you a name that makes things bow, I can tell poverty to bow. I can tell demons to bow. And they will bow. These are the things we inherited. And that's not all. Because the name of Christ is name upon us, we become part of the family of God. You can trace me to Benue. That's where I, I that's where I was I was mandated to manifest from. But my original family is Zion. <laughs> they said, Your mother and your brothers are here to see you. They said, Who is my mother? So you think that's my family. I came from there. I belong to God. I belong to the family of God. I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. I belong to the Lord. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. You have inherited his name. And that's not all. You have also inherited his mind. First Corinthians 2:16. It said we have the mind of Christ. See, that's why I can't fail. Oga, I am not just intelligent, I have the mind of God. Sometimes I see people, every little thing overwhelms them. They are not me. Ask those who are around me. Nothing intimidates me. You see 10 people running up and down. We don't know what to do. Stop there. Do this, do this, do this. And you walk away. It's the mind of Christ. It's not human intelligence. And when you say the ability to do it is important. Came for the crusade on the first day, they were running, try to fix fire, try to. I say, What nonsense is this? Is this the crusade we prayed for? Immediately, phew, there was activation. Cancel their project now, cancel the contract immediately. How do we get another sound tomorrow? It's sorted. Get another sound in 24 hours. I went to the stage, I said, By tomorrow, everything you see here will be overhauled. You, you, you know. The Bible says concerning Jesus, himself knew what to do. You are in the middle of a contract. Everybody is confused because something is going wrong. Don't be part of them. Step aside. Don't allow their energy choke you. If you need to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. 
so that you disconnect from their failure mentality. And while you are there alone, connect to Zion. You have the mind of Christ. When you show up, open your mouth, talk. God will speak through you. He said, when they invite you, don't bother what you say. Matthew 10, 20. Open your mouth. I will fill it up with words. It's the mind of Christ. We are not confused. We cannot be stranded. We know more than our teachers. It's the mind of Christ. That's what we inherited. So when we study, we are just enriching that mind. I was listening to Pastor Chris some years ago. And he said, they asked him a question. He said, oh, I've forgotten. And the Holy Ghost told him, the mind you have does not forget. He said, ah, but I've forgotten. He said, no, the mind of Christ does not forget. You are just learning how to use that mind. So that mind has a way to talk. What do you say? I will remember. After a while, I remember. And I remember suddenly made him to remember. And a point came. He was going to the stage and he forgot his biro in the office. He wanted to say, ah, I've forgotten my biro. They now want him. You have learned this thing to a level. If you say some things now, you'll be judged. Because when you grow, the rules become stricter. And then he wanted to tell Reverend Tom, get my biro. They want him again. So what do I do? Tell the biro to come. Tell the biro to come. And he put his hand on his pocket. Manta, Frek, Testeriga, Maragata. Biro appeared there. He removed it and started writing. Nobody knew what happened. The mind of Christ produces things. That's why the Bible said, we have not received the spirit that is of this world. We have received the spirit that is of God. That we know the things that are freely given to us by God. He said, these things we speak, not with wisdom that human wisdom teaches, but the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. So you start comparing. What Jesus did is what you now do. A point came, he showed up in a healing service. A man had cancer. But when he looked at the man, the paper was showing cancer. He looked at the man, there was no cancer. And the Holy Ghost told him, that's how God sees. God is not seeing cancer because he has been healed. Immediately, he enforced what he was seeing and brought health back to the man without using the anointing. That's how we grow. You have the mind of Christ. That's why the Bible said, when men are cast down, you say there is a lifting up. There is a way you see and think it has changed. And that's not all. You have the faith of Jesus. Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I have the faith of the Son of God. These are the things we have inherited. So when the Bible said we are heirs, it's not an exaggeration. Everything that Christ had that gave him victory has become ours. How can you have the anointing of Jesus, the faith of Jesus, the mind of Jesus, the life of Jesus, and you are defeated? No way. No way. This is the beauty and the blessedness of the resurrection. Everything he has, he shares with you. So as he is, so are you in this world. I belong to the Lord. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. I am glad. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. I am glad. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. things a point will come your results will become too many you won't know which one produced it whether it's the name of Jesus or the righteousness of God or the life of God or the faith of Jesus or the mind of Christ you will, there will be too many things wanting to produce results in your life that's when your life becomes a wonder to your generation anything you do works that's the call of the Christian sometimes the mind of Christ goes to work you just know what to do. Sometimes the name of Jesus goes to work. Sometimes the life goes to work. Sometimes the faith goes to work. And sometimes the anointing goes to work. So many things to your advantage. I prophesy over someone. As you walk out of this service, you become a wonder to your generation. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Lord. I am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I am glad. I, am glad. I belong to Jesus. Hey. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I am glad. I, am glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I am glad. I belong to Jesus.
for you anymore. You can wake up from your bed and give command. You can be in the, in the middle of crisis and still be changing things. I heard about Maron Branham. He had an accident and while he was dying they told him the wife, because he was driving with his wife, they told him the wife had already given up and Maron Branham said, draw me to her. And they drew him and they put his hand on the wife and brought her back to life. And when the woman came back to life, he said, I'm ready to go. That means if he wanted, he wouldn't have died. You know, somebody is supposed to be in pain. He said, draw me close. Let me, talk. Let me put my hand on her. And they put his hand on her. The woman came back to life. That's why I tell you. Be careful. Don't marry somebody because he's speaking good English or has big chest. Marry a man that has heritage in the spirit. They can bring you back from the grave. Marry a woman that has heritage in the spirit. She can change your business overnight. Lift your hands toward heaven. You want to celebrate Easter now? Are you ready to celebrate Easter? Come on, let's dance for two minutes. Now you have understanding. You have the faith of Christ. You have the life of Christ. Come on! I'm glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Now dance from I revelation. To my God. Don't dance from emotion. I dance from revelation. Jesus, I belong to Jesus. Victory over death. Life of God. Faith of God. Somebody dance give Jesus a shout. Dance from revelation, not from emotion. Whichever got to you, hold it, catalambano it, and celebrate. Some of you, you are celebrating victory over death. Some of you, you are celebrating being heirs of God. Some of you, you are celebrating walking in the realms of life. Some of you, you are celebrating manifesting the faith of Jesus. Are you ready? Somebody shout! <laughs> I gonna serve you forever, oh, you. everybody. You do well, I thank you, oh. You don't make my life better. Jesus, I love you, oh. You do well, I thank you. Oh. If there's any area of your you life, you don't make my life that better. That needs intervention. I gonna Exercise serve you forever, oh. You be my boss. You do well, I thank you, oh.
your thanksgiving offering and then go back. Glory to God. So as the music continues, just dance from the back. Give your thanksgiving offering and then you go back. Glory to God. And those online, the details will be projected on the screen. Just go ahead and be a part of it. Tonight is a thanksgiving service. So go ahead and give your thanksgiving offerings. God bless you.
Alleluia. Please hear this. Carry these revelations. Practice them and war with them. You will be amazed what your life will turn out to be. I heard Bishop Oede Bo sharing the other time and he said, Amen. when he cut these truths, he told his father, anything you have to share as inheritance, give my brethren, I don't need it. <laughs> With all respect, daddy, give them. I have something else. You can't be small. It's not a manipulation. It's a heaven and earth will pass away. Not one jot or tittle will pass away from the world. Now, I decree over you, as you step into April, you will make war by faith. And you will overcome all your battles in the name of Jesus. I decree over you, by the life that defeated the grave, by the life that defeated death, every aspect of your life, enjoy all round victory in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, we are seated with him in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers. I decree over you, as you step into April, you will be far above all your adversaries. In the name of Jesus. He said we are joint heirs with Christ. So everything he has belongs to us. I therefore decree and declare, from this new month, walk in the realms of abundance. Walk in the realms of abundance. Walk in the realms of abundance. In the name of Jesus. He said whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, I decree and declare over you, no circumstantial force can bring you down. No governmental force can bring you down. No environmental force can bring you down. Become bigger than the influence of the government of your nation. Become bigger than the influence of the economy of your nation. God supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He said a little one shall become a thousand. A small one shall become a great nation. I decree and declare over you, become a great nation. Become a great nation. Become a great nation. Capacity to rule as a nation. In the name of Jesus. He said even in the midst of your enemies, you shall prosper. I decree and declare, you become the envy of your generation. None of your enemies shall, 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 shall kindle over you. Rule amongst your enemies. Rule amongst your friends. Become ten times better than your generation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I speak by the Spirit. Let a fresh unction come upon your life. He said, my horn has thou exalted as the horn of the unicorn. You have anointed my head with fresh oil. And he said, the hand of God was upon Elijah. He outran the chariots of Ahab. I decree and declare by the hand of God, outrun the chariots of Ahab. Overtake the status quo. Overtake the best in society. Become the standard of your generation. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of resurrection, anything dead in your life come back to life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. They that believe in me shall not die. And he said, even if they were dead, they shall live again by the spirit of resurrection. I decree and declare everything dead in your life returns back to life. And everything committed to your trust shall not die. In the name of Jesus, your members, your family members shall not die. Your business shall not die. Your career shall not die. Your relationships cannot die. I provoke the anointing of the resurrection. Everything undergoing damage in your life by the spirit of resurrection I command them to be corrected I command them to be corrected I speak over your health I decree blossom in health blossom in health like the cedars of Lebanon it says that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you he will quicken your mortal body 
I decree over you. Your mortal bodies are quickened. Your liver is quickened. Your kidney is quickened. Your blood is quickened. Your cells are quickened. Your tissues are quickened. Your organs are quickened. In the name of Jesus. He said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he became poor that you might become rich. I speak over your life. The power to succeed. The power to prevail. Let it rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus. I told you already. The Bible said we are joint heirs with Christ. We have inherited his anointing. We have inherited his faith. We have inherited his mind. We have inherited his righteousness. We have inherited his life. I decree over you. Everything Jesus manifested. Walk in it in your lifetime. Beginning from the month of April. In the name of Jesus. He said the works that I do. You shall do also. And greater works than this. From today. You shall be known as a man in the order of greater works. You shall be known as a woman in the order of greater works. In the name of Jesus. Doors are opening to you in this month. You are enjoying restoration in this month. In the name of Jesus. Ah! Somebody is becoming a multitude. Somebody is becoming a great nation. Somebody is stepping into realms eternal. Realms of immortality. Realms of, of, of resurrection. I decree and I declare you shall testify. You shall testify. He said when the Lord shall turn again the captivity of Zion. He said we were like them that dream dream. So our mouth was filled with laughter. In the month of April your mouth shall be filled with laughter. In the name of Jesus. Whatever the devil has planted in your body, whatever the devil has planted in your business, whatever the devil has planted in your family, planted in your career, that is not of God, but creating death, I decree by the power of the highest, they are uprooted now. They are uprooted now. In the name of Jesus, Every weight you have carried until now, they are alighted by the power of the Holy Ghost. Arise, shine. Your light is come. Hear me. Every one of you will manifest the fullness of the resurrection. It will not be a gospel you hear. You will become witnesses of that gospel. They say, go into all the world and disciple all nations, teaching them all you have received from me. He said, not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power and you shall be witnesses unto me. I decree over you, everything the word says, become the proof. Become the witness. Become the validation by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. So let it be written. So let it be established. Some of you listening to me, it appears as if yes, God will do it, but it may not be with me. You'll be the first to experience it. God will prove to you that what he wants to do is beyond your faith by the power of the Holy Ghost. So let it be written. So let it be established in Jesus' name. Can I announce to someone by this time next week you will have a three, three, three testimonies. Bodily testimony Financial testimony, a 
and testimony of encounters with God. I decree it is established in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a shout of praise. We'll be out of here in a few minutes. Shall we stretch forth our hands towards God's servant? He has blessed us tonight. Stretch forth your hands and begin to prophesy over his life. Bless him as well. Prophesy over his life and ministry that the Lord will continue to increase him from strength to strength. Virtue has left him. The Bible said, he that watereth shall himself be watered. Speak, speak words. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Please, let's listen to the following announcement. This is Encounter Jesus Ministry Internationals. We are a tribe of sons that do the will of their Heavenly Father. And we are priests that bear the burdens of their Lord. And kings that advance the kingdom of God and reign in life. Praise God. So I would like to acquaint us with our weekly activities. On Monday, we meet here by 5 o'clock for prayer meetings where we come together to pray and tarry in God's presence. Hallelujah. It's a time for you to come and join us as we, we tarry in God's presence. And on Tuesdays as well, we meet here for our Bible study between the hours of 5 and 8 o'clock as well. Come and let's go dig into God's word. And on Sundays like this, we meet by 4 p.m., where we encounter Jesus. Hallelujah. But adventure today is your first time of worshiping with us. I'd like you to wave your hands wherever you're seated. Can I see your hands? You can take a bold step and just rise on your feet again. Just rise. Please, can you just clap for them? We pray that you should come and we are glad that you're here today. Today, you are a guest in the house. But from tomorrow, from next week, you will no longer be a guest in the house. And so I would like you to just carry your bags and your Bibles, whatever you came to service with. And um, the, the ushers will be behind. Just walk. Ushers, please guide them as you follow them. Please keep clapping for them as they move. Just allow, let the ushers guide them, please. Take your bags and your Bibles as the ushers guide you. They want to tell you more about Encounter Jesus Ministry. Hallelujah. And of course, the online viewers, you are not... Um, you are not absent from this. If today is also your first time of joining us online, we celebrate you. Please, can we just clap for the online viewers as well? We are glad that you are a part of this meeting and we know that you enjoyed tonight's meeting. Hallelujah. I you encouraged to join a service department. Please join a service department in the church. Don't just be a spectator. Don't just sit down and allow things just walk past through you. Be a part of what God is doing here. And as you walk in God's vineyard, God will meet you at the point of your need as well. I also like to let us know that um, movement will be restricted during the service, especially when the word is going forth. And so I would like us to cooperate with the ushers as they guide us as well to a good sitting position. Hallelujah. I'm made to understand that um, the School of Spiritual Foundation, how many of you took part in the last cohort three School of Spiritual Foundation? If you are here, can I see your hands? Okay, so the School of Spiritual Foundation, your graduation is next Sunday. I thought you put your hands. It was a time in God's presence. A series of uh, teachings went through School of Spiritual Foundation and we are graduating certain numbers of people come this Sunday and if you know you want to be a part of this School of Spiritual Foundation as well, immediately after service you come and meet any of our leaders or you meet the coordinator and ask more details about that. And for those of you who participated online, I'm informed that you also want to be a part of those who will graduate, try and see your coordinator for further clarification. Hallelujah. It's also important for us to understand that the last Sunday of every month is our child dedication. So if you're here, you want to do your child dedication as what you've seen today is the last Sunday of every month. And if you have any intention of getting married 
in this ministry, you, you like to see me after service. If you have the intention of getting married and being joined by this ministry, please see me after every, this service. Our building project is ongoing as well. I would like you to be a part of the, the building project. So financially towards this building project, commit yourself towards this building project as well. I would like um, the, the media to display the account, the building project account, so that people uh, online can um, see, hallelujah. We have lost and found items. If you are Patricia Ako, please see me after your, the service. Um, I picked up your ATM card, hallelujah. The last announcement, if you came in when the offering was taken, the ushers will be at the exit for you to give your offering. Shall we rise on our feet as we bring the meeting to a close? Can you just speak words tonight, that this word that you've heard tonight, that God will keep them in your heart. Just keep going. Go ahead and speak. Keep speaking that this word will remain and abide in your hearts. The Bible said, he that heareth and doeth is the one that will be blessed. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and speak to God that this word will not be stolen from you. That you will meditate upon this word day and night in Jesus' name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. See you tomorrow Monday for prayer meeting. And if you lost any of your items, please just come to the front, a post. There's a post that is found. Just please come to the front and you'll be given your post. You identify yourself or you'll be given your post. God bless you.